really the research is out on that, you know, um, it's really hard to know, I think. Um, so I would say more to come on that. Hopefully there'll be more research around that, but really not a definite answer in, in that. And certainly if you are uh, consuming THC, make sure your regular doctor knows about that just so that it's not affecting other medications that you may be taking. David, okay. Thank you. thank you very much, David. I now have Earl. Um, go ahead, Earl. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself, Earl. Yeah, I hear you now, Teresa. Thank you. Teresa, I wanted to ask Ern, uh, at one time I had seizures, right? And uh, I didn't know what was causing them. And as the guy just said, he was talking about a marijuana. And, uh, and I, I used to uh, smoke marijuana too, but they tell me that I was going when I was going to the street, instead of getting medical marijuana, it was having all kinds of stuff in it. And that was hitting my brain and giving me a seizure. And but, uh, uh, it's that. been about two years now since I had seen a doctor at my Washington Hospital Center, a uh, numerology doctor, whatever he was. He, um, uh, he cured me real good because he gave me some pills that I've been using for the last two years and I haven't had a season yet. And it's been, it been so good, but I wanted to ask Ern did, about the brain, do that affect it or, or do it come through the brain? Yeah, so one, I'm glad Earl that you're uh, doing better and feeling better. And it, it goes to the point whether it's marijuana or a supplement or something that we're not aware of, when we're putting it into our bodies, we may not know how it's going to affect our brains. Um, mm -hmm. I believe it's something new or unique. So that's why we want to be really, really careful. And that's why we say, please check with your doctor, your provider. And what mm -hmm. Vince was just saying, oftentimes what we'll find out is someone has started on a new drug or it can even be a supplement. They're taking three or four other drugs and there's a mm -hmm. drug interaction that occurs. And the pharmacist mm -hmm. sometimes even more so than the doctor will identify that. Uh, or the mm -hmm. nurse will identify that. So we just want to be extra cautious, extra careful when we're introducing new things into the body. And mm -hmm. if possible, you know, check with your medical, your healthcare providers, uh, you know, when doing that. But, you know, Earl, I'm definitely glad that, uh, you know, you're doing better and that, uh, you know, you haven't had seizures. And thank you so much. And I appreciate that. Sure. And thank you, Earl. The next person on our list is Ms. Clement. Go ahead and unmute, ask your question. Miss Clement, are you there? Unmute. Okay, are you hearing me? Yes, we are. Okay, I would like to know what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? Okay, so they're, they're very much related, but they are in a sense different. So, Alzheimer's is, is just one type of dementia. I want you to think of an umbrella. And under this umbrella, the umbrella is called dementia. So the umbrella itself is dementia. Underneath that umbrella are a whole bunch of different types of dementia. So Alzheimer's is one type of dementia. Lewy body uh, dementia is one type of dementia. Frontal temporal lobe is one type of dementia. Vascular dementia is one type of dementia. And as I mentioned earlier, there's about 14 major types and a lot of subtypes of uh, dementia. So we use a term, a broad category for dementia, but when a person says that, we'll often ask what type of dementia were you diagnosed with? Uh, because what happens in the brain, the way they're able to tell is that uh, due to uh, the way the, the neurons in the brain are dying off, a very particular pattern, they're able to make very specific you know, decisions on what type of disease the person is dealing with, what type of dementia. Now, of those, I said there's 14, say major types of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common, about 70 to 80% of all of those dementias is Alzheimer's. So Alzheimer's is just one type of dementia, but it is the most common. And unfortunately, uh, as I mentioned earlier, right now we do not have a way to really stop the disease. Uh, we don't have a way to cure it. Uh, there's a lot of promising research. I mentioned these 40,000 researchers. They have so much hope and promise that a lot of good things are going on. And it's just incredible. A lot of people say it's an amazing time to be a researcher because there's so much uh, you know, hope out there in terms of 
you know, dealing with the symptoms as well as dealing with the disease itself. Okay, thank you, Ms. Yeah, thank Kelly. you. Sure. Okay, our next person on our list is Mandy. Go ahead, Mandy, and unmute and ask your question. Hi, good afternoon. Um, you were mentioning nutrition as being important and um, mentioned also, a, well, for vegetarians, um, there is the importance of dairy and within that there's a consumption of cheese. So I've read that, you know, that's good for you. It's, it's protein, it's good calcium for bones, et cetera. But then there's also the risk of, um, you know, building up cholesterol and um, plaque, et cetera. So um, is there any, any thoughts that you have on that? Um, whether it's um, a pro or a con to consume it? Well, I mean, the doctors say, you know, things in moderation, but the other thing that they consistently tell us is it's different for different people. So there's not one recipe for a person. So some people can eat, you know, plenty of dairy and cheese and it doesn't affect their body. They're not, you know, as prone to say cholesterol, say another person. So, you know, the key is again, you know, talking with your doctor, talking with your nutritionist to find out, even if you're a vegetarian, what is going to be the most appropriate way to get the nutrients that you need? I, again, I think the most common thing that the doctors tell us is it's, there's just not one single recipe. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you're vegetarian, not vegetarian, it's finding out what's going to be the most effective for your, your body chemistry. And Ben, I don't know if you have other thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you, Aaron. Um, I would just say, just for sort of a brief answer about cheese specifically, I would say, again, like Aaron said, in moderation, talk with your doctor about, you know, your intake of cheese. It shouldn't be dominating your diet, for sure. Um, it should be more, more um, a lesser part of your diet than, say, vegetables and things like that, right? So... Yeah. I mean, their portions are so tiny, one little one inch square cube, you barely get anything out of that. But <laughs> right, right. And, and, and think about what Dr. Soros is saying is they're saying don't stop completely having, you know, desserts that you like, you know, having a piece of cake once in a while, having a cookie once in a while is they said it's absolutely fine. Um, they said they have they have cookies and cake themselves, you know, being you know doctors and nutritionists. They said just don't overdo it, don't make it a consistent part. You know, make sure you're putting in the berries and the fruits and things like that as, as part of your desserts as well. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, thank you, Mandy. Um, next we have is Rosalind Bell. Go ahead and unmute Rosalind. Oh. Hello. Yep, we can hear you. Okay, um, I have two questions. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to know, like, if 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 for forgetfulness, mm -hmm. is that a part of dementia? To okay. you know, like, sometimes I lay stuff down, and I don't know exactly at that particular time where I laid it at, mm -hmm. and it takes me sometimes like a half an hour to remember. Yep. Where is that, you know? And I wanted to know by me losing, you know, space time like that, you know, whether or not it's, it's a part of dementia, forgetfulness. So uh, we'll call it normal uh, forgetfulness and then forgetfulness that affects daily life. So we actually have a whole other program on what we call the warning signs of, uh, of Alzheimer's and dementia. And you know, we could be happy to you know, provide that uh, info. But Rosalind, what, um, when you're able to recall where, it may take a little bit longer to recall where you put something, say it's the keys or your purse or something, but you're able to backtrack, you're able to remember that. Um, that's you know, what doctors will typically say normal forgetfulness. Someone who's dealing with a significant cognitive impairment, whether it's from Alzheimer's, dementia, it could be from thyroid disease, it could be from dehydration, they're not always able to remember, they can't backtrack. Um, in addition, the forgetfulness is so bad that it is really affecting their daily life. It's not been the normal pattern for this person. So something's going on. There's, you know, there it, it's, you know, they're not able to recall things and they're putting maybe things really in odd places now. They're putting things in the stove or the refrigerator um, or they're starting to accuse people of stealing uh, from them, uh, even though they're the ones that may have misplaced something. So yes. a type of forgetfulness. And uh, so what you're talking about, you know, could there be, you know, something there? You're able to, to recall, you know, it takes a little while to remember where it was. Don't know. I mean, 
you, again, I would recommend check with your doctor. It could, you know, and, uh, again, get your uh, your blood tests and whatnot and see what's going on. Um, but one, it may be for you normal. Two, okay. there could be, you know, things going on with your met types of uh, medications you're on. Uh, again, dehydration. So many things affect uh, what we call cognitive impairment. Yes, Just because but, a person is forgetful doesn't mean that they have Alzheimer's or dementia. Yes, that's what, because after a while, I'll be able to, backtrack and remember exactly where they, where it's at because I remember I also did some of my friends like that had locked them in my own apartment and said nobody was going out until I found my money because <laughs> I could have sworn that they took my money you know? I know so uh, then after sitting down now after sitting down and threatening them, you know, <laughs> 10 minutes later, I remember I put the money underneath the rug. The oh, bedroom. Lord. You know, but I, I had them all nervous. I laid them trip and everything, you know. But I have this second question also. Go ahead, bro. Yeah. Okay, I, I am a four-stage small cell counselor. Mm -hmm. uh, my oncologist told me well, it's no cure for it, but I, I have it. They can keep it under control, control from spreading. Mm -hmm. But she said, if it does start spreading, it will go like to my bones and to my brains. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that I don't know for sure if I heard somebody had brain cancer? Oh yeah, and, uh, and um, um. Uh, uh, head brain cancer. Is it a way that you can di dictate from the brain whether the cancer was the cause? Rosalind, first, you know, very sorry to hear that you're having to deal with uh, this type of that type of disease. Yes, but I'm glad that as of right now, as you said, it's uh, hopefully under control and will stay that way for a long, long time. Yes. Um, in answer to your question, though, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't have that kind of information, but it is a you know, question we might be able to ask our doctors. Um, but you know, I'm not familiar with something like that at all. I don't know ben, if you right. are. Oh, okay. I'm yes, I'm not either. So yeah, I don't I don't really know how to answer your question on that. Sorry. Okay then. All right. Thank you. I'll 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 follow it up with my oncologist. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so Rosalyn. Uh -huh. I have someone by the with an iPad with the hands up. Can you please tell me your name and unmute yourself? Your name, please, iPad. Your your hands are up. Terry Jackson. What is your name? Cherry Jackson. Cherry Jackson. Go ahead, Cherry. Cherry. Cheryl T Jackson. T-E-R-R-Y. Okay. Okay. I wanted to ask, I do have a tendency uh, to forget from time to time, but I actually uh, will go back um, within my 10 minutes or so and remember where it's at. So do I have uh, worries to think that I might be uh, going into that uh, situation? So what you're highlighting is what we consider to be a, one warning sign. And it's uh, it doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's or dementia a, at all. It could be a range of different things that uh, you know, could cause that. Two, one, it could be just a normal part of your, your aging. Uh, yeah. You aren't able to recall. Um, the other things are, you know, are, you know, what we're just talking about today, increasing the overall, you know, brain health through exercise, nutrition, etc. Those kinds of things may also uh, help. If you're on multiple medications, you know, getting that double check by uh, your doctor, or pharmacist to make sure that there's no interactions there that could cause uh, an impairment. Now, are you hydrating? I believe it or not. Uh, well, so I, many... I drink. I drink a lot of water. All right, good. I, I, yeah. I, I say All that. All day long. Yeah, and I say that because. All these assisted living communities, we talk to a lot of the nurses and staff. They'll say many times that person's having cognitive impairment, it's because they're being they're dehydrated. And, uh, you know, so I always highlight that as something, please hydrate. But what I would recommend, definitely talk to your primary. Let them know what's going on, that you're a little bit concerned. They can do some basic tests and see if there's other memory issues going on. There's mm -hmm. a, a basic paper and pencil type test that your primary might be able to, to do to see if there's anything uh, there. But it's a warning sign, but based on what you're saying, you're able to record things, you know, a short time yeah. after. 
So and I just turned 66 uh, last year. So I, I was thinking about the anyway. That's Earl. That's young. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, um, Miss Jackson. We the next person we have on board for a question is Vera Moore. Go ahead and unmute Vera. We can't hear you. Unmute. Unmute. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was my we my mom had been diagnosed with dementia. And I just learned this has been very informative, even though I've come on late. What form of dementia? She can we can be carrying on a conversation and my mom will tune right in on whatever we're talking about. She remembers our names. And we, we tease that we're the ones with dementia. My mother don't have anything. <laughs> She'll be 108 on Monday. Wow. wow. Yes, wow. 108. Wonderful. So I'm just wondering what type of dementia <laughs> where you can be. She mm -hmm. doesn't talk a lot, but when she talks, she tells us whatever is on her mind, get out of her face or whatever, whatever you know. But um, <laughs> what type of dementia is that? So... It all, the, the doctors would be honestly the only ones that could really uh, make that determination because they would do different types of tests. So, mm -hmm. you know, it may not be Alzheimer's mm -hmm. or it could be Alzheimer's, but it's still like early stage. So the risk of developing Alzheimer's increases significantly, uh, you know, after, you know, age you know, 55, but really after age 85, I think one out of three uh, people actually start to develop the disease after uh, age 85. But a person may have clarity so when we say certain someone has Alzheimer's, it doesn't mean it's all or nothing. It's uh, okay. it might be clear for part of the day and completely mm -hmm. with it. And then the other part of the day, particularly usually we call yeah. it sound, sundowning, they may not be with it. And they're like, what, right. what's your mom? Yes. She's like, okay. she's nonverbal. Okay. Sometimes, and that, that's where I know where it's, you know, where I, sometimes I can just look at it and tell them when she's not with us, you know. Yeah. But most of the time she's with us. Man, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping she... get 108 up <laughs> with you that much. <laughs> my yeah. younger sister know what type of dementia it is. She said, if I get dementia, I want what mama has, whatever <laughs> kind of dementia it is, if it comes upon me. To give you an idea, so right. the, it's frontal temporal lobe. So the way that it might affect the brain is going to be different than, say, Alzheimer's. There might be uh, up front more issues with uh, speaking or understanding language. It could be if it's that Louis body one that I mentioned that Robin Williams, the actor had, it could affect more like personality and things like that, more delusions, more hallucinations. So all of these, they're all different. They all have different patterns of the way that they're affecting the brain. Alzheimer's is the one that we know most often is the one that's affecting memory most significantly uh, right up front. All okay. these dimensions can though affect, you know, uh, you know, memory as well. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anyone that's considered more mildly dementia than others? Yeah, mild. Uh, it's all, there's different stages, so different progressions, and it depends. So, as I said, some people, when once they're diagnosed, they may have a five to eight year lifespan once they've been diagnosed. Other people may live for twenty years. Now, if she mm -hmm. lives to another twenty years. I'll be. I mean, that's that's <laughs> tremendous. Um, that that'd be awesome. Well, this has been going on for at least about eight years now. Yeah. That's so there's an example. Years. So she's already long. About, so a lot of people live with dementia for uh, different types of dementia for a long period of time, even Alzheimer's. So there is no one recipe. It is different based on the person's body chemistry, based on their socioeconomic, based on their family. So if their family is mm -hmm. very engaged with them, you know, that, that kind of cognitive stimulation is very, very okay. good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Thank you, Vera. Uh, we have Diane and we're close to wrapping it up in any moment now. So we'll go ahead and take Diane and then Mr. August. Go ahead, Diane, unmute. Yeah, um, hi. Is it recommended to get a geriatric doctor at a certain, well, at, well, yeah, at a certain age, would you recommend a geriatric doctor over a regular doctor? regular uh, primary care a lot of people do see as they age we'll talk to uh you know a geriatrician a geriatric doctor but we usually you know uh and even from the doctors that we've had part of our sessions i'll say check their primary first because you know that's often a specialist and um you know they may recommend that you you, you talk to that kind of start meeting with that kind of doctor yeah. um 
But I think that's typically the route that people will take. They'll start with their primary, and then depending on the type of specialist that they might need, um, then you know they'll start interacting with that person. I'm trying to figure out, well, I don't think they would have the patient to linger on or, or figure that they, well, I can heal this person. But yeah, I, I would think that they would recommend a geriatric doctor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Our last and final question is with uh, Lou. Go ahead, Lou. Unmute. Yeah, hi. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Teresa. Great presentation. Quick question. I have a, I'm 63 years old. There's quite a bit of dementia in my family history and also high cholesterol. And I was recently prescribed Lipitor. And I've seen conflicting information about statins and whether or not they contribute to dementia. Do you have any information on that, specifically Lipitor? I have not honestly heard that specifically. I'm going to ask Ben to also respond, but I've not heard about things, uh, the correlation, uh, a causal correlation uh, with statins and, uh, and, and Lipitor and Alzheimer's or other dementias. Um, you know, family history that is a risk, as you know, a risk factor for Alzheimer's dementia, particularly if uh, you've had both sides of the family that have had uh, had the disease, it's a uh, higher risk. Um, but I'm going to pass that over to Ben and see if he has any information. I've not heard, I don't even remember from the, uh, the, the conference um, that that was specifically mentioned. Yeah, I would just say that cholesterol is one of the areas we know the least about in terms of its correlation with your increase of risk of developing Alzheimer's disease or dementia. Um, that being said, though, uh, I think, you know, any kind of measures you can take to reduce hypertension, we do know there is a strong correlation between reducing hypertension and reducing your risk of Alzheimer's disease or, or developing dementia. So uh, about that specific drug Lipitor, I haven't seen uh, specific research around that. And I would just caution you that whenever you hear a new study or something like that, um, before there's like multiple studies that are coming out, um, just to gather more information on that, talk to your doctor about it, weigh the sort of pros and cons for your personal health as well. So, um, and, and I'll put in the chat and I'll provide this with um, Miss Teresa as well, the email to the group, but we have a science hub app where you can download the kind of vetted research information um, from the association, as well as I'll have some healthy living tips with diet and that kind of thing too. So yeah, and the back to you, Aaron. Question, uh, Lou, uh, since we don't know that answer, it's a question we, I, I, we honestly haven't had. Um, I would recommend you can also call that help on the 800-272-3800 number. And um, Ben may have already put that in, in the chat, but they might be able to quickly do the research on that. Um, Sometimes they will, uh, if they don't know the answer, they'll be able to do, you know, get the uh, information, do their own research, and then contact you back. Thank you so much. You're very okay. welcome. Hey, I'd like the audience to please um, show your appreciation to, Ms. to Ben and Aaron for giving <laughs> us this very informative information. Yay, thank, thank you. Very, very thank, you. thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really did enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> very I learned a lot. All right. Yes. Yes. You're learning cognitive stimulation. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, thank you thank again. You. All right. All right. Yeah. Thank and you. And guys, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Okay. Thank you, thank you very you. much, Ben and Aaron. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Ms. James. You're more than thank welcome. You. Uh, is you. Wanda Queen still on board? I Either? am. Wanda, I've been trying to get in touch with you with, by phone. Would you mind calling me at the end of this session? On what number should I call? The that would be, yes, the 800 number. I'll call you at the end of the session. Thank you very much. And okay. is Anne, Anne on board? And Rollins, yes. No, not Rollins. Nope. At, 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 the last name is spelled A D. Ademiso, are you there? You're showing that you are. I sent you a text for you to contact me also. And spelled, the last name is spelled A D E M I S O Y E. It's very important that you get in touch with me.
thank you. I want to wish all of you the, a very happy um, weekend going forth. We've got something really exciting coming up on February 14th. Uh, we're having a, a Valentine's karaoke, um, karaoke um, <laughs> session where there'll be first, second, and third prize. Uh, we're actually sending out the list of the songs. We can only have 10 participants, 10 candidates. So the first 10 that responds to our flyer would be the one selected to sing that day and then voted on not by me, but by the audience to uh -huh. get the prize. Yeah. So the list, we already prepared a list. So start practicing, select your song. First, register with us one, select your song from the list and then start practicing. How about that? <laughs> How about that? How about that? Right? How so, about that? And dress up in your red and white on Valentine's Day. We're going to have a, you know, a wonderful Valentine's celebration. Okay? Okay. okay. All right, then. Okay. So have a wonderful weekend. Again, thank, thank you. all of you. You're thank very you. beautiful. So you have a wonderful one, too. Okay, you. then. Bless. God bless all of you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. And I'll call you. Enjoy your weekend. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Take care. Like I did with Chris.